All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how I put together this mudroom shelf slash hanger slash shiplap and bench combination. And the bench has two compartments where I'm gonna slide some bins. Anyway, I'll get, uh, get onto this. It is a bit of a longer video, but try and uh, make it as short as possible. So the first thing I'm doing is marking out where I want the top of the bench. For this, I'm putting it at about 18 inches. I just sort of took a existing bench that was in the house and sort of teed it off that. So I'm marking that on the wall. And my camera does have a lot of trouble focusing at these close distances. Kind of a bummer. And I'm using maple for all this. I measured the back at about 36 inches. So I cut a two and a half inch by three quarters inch maple for the back. Like I said, about 36 inches. And then the remainder is about 14 inches for those two smaller pieces. So. These are the pieces I'm gonna to use to support what is gonna be the maple plywood. I use pre-stain treatment on the boards. Just brush that on with a foam brush and let it sit for about 10 minutes. And then I came back and applied wood stain. What the pre-treatment does is just help the stain take a uniformed appearance across the board. I don't know if it actually does that much. I always find sometimes it's inconsistent and sometimes it's not. Anyway, I use foam brushes to put on the stain on these maple boards as well. And these are just Home Depot maple boards. They're not like really nice, but uh, they're good for what I'm using them for, I suppose. And once this stains on, you need to let the board sit for about 10 minutes. And then I come back and wipe the stain off. There's other ways you can do it, but that's the way I did it. So I tried to stay consistent. Like I said, pre-treatment, then add the stain, let it sit for 10 minutes and then come back with some cloths and wipe off the excess stain. If you don't wipe off the excess stain, it's gonna look uh, pretty bad. And for these, I only do one coat of the stain. You could do two coats if you want it to be a little bit darker. And then obviously I have to flip them over and do the other side. So this is a time consuming process doing both sides like this because you're always flipping them over. Once both sides are stained up, I then use this Verithane clear coat to put the clear coat on the boards and very similar to how I applied everything else just using a foam brush brush it on make sure there's no runs and drips because obviously it'll harden and look strange and uh, just do that to all the boards same deal you gotta let this stuff sit for about three hours before you can turn it over and do the other side and then again you have to wait three hours before you do anything with it for the boards that are going to be underneath I only do one coat of clear coat for boards that you're actually gonna see, I do two coats of clear coat. I do put some construction adhesive on the wall where the supports for the bench are gonna go. And when I do the shelf, I kinda of do the same thing as well. Make sure that it's level, and then I'm using a nail gun to secure the, the board to the wall. And I've marked out where all the studs are, so I do shoot the nails into the studs. So I'm using a bit, uh, a bit longer of a nail there. I found this one corner actually dips in pretty far, so that's why I got that piece of uh, wood shim on this corner. And then once the once the plywood top goes down, you're not gonna see that uh, deviation. And there's the uh, camera acting funny again. So then I do the sides, just make sure that they're level. Once the two sides are on, I do a dry fit of the last two pieces and the piece of plywood. So I put the end piece in place and I put that there so that the plywood doesn't dip down in the front and it'll stay secure. And then I take a slightly larger piece. I believe this is a three and a half inch piece uh, of width and that'll take up the additional space for the plywood so that you don't see the plywood edge and it'll also give it a little bit more strength. Now I'm going to go cut my plywood and it's about 17 by 36 ish give or take I do have a pre-made cutting jig that I use for cutting straight lines on lots of my larger sheet goods and that just lets me use my circular saw for it so I just sort of marked out the 36 and uh, lined up my cutting jig on it and then then cut it I find it a little bit easier so I am dry fitting it I didn't get it too close to the wall because you can see when I put the ship lap on it will cover up any of the gaps. I do have these small pieces. I was gonna do the small pieces on the edge to cover up any deviations between the plywood and the wall, 
but in the end I find it's actually pretty tight anyway so I don't bother uh, putting that little one inch piece on there but maybe I'll come back later so you can see how it looks with the plywood edge there you could leave it like that it actually doesn't look terrible um, I could live with that but like I said I do take the larger board and really just got to pick something that will cover the plywood and the two and a half inch board and then just put that on the face and then you won't see the plywood edge anymore and then I just cut another piece of plywood I'm using that one inch piece to cover the edge of the plywood on the bottom. Again, just so you don't see that edge. If you don't care and you don't mind looking at the plywood edge, then it's fine. To try and speed up the, the staining and clear coat process on these things, I did uh, bang some nails into the ends of everything and then just sort of do it rotisserie style so I can get both sides at once and cut my time in half here. And like I said, I use uh, two coats of the clear coat. So I use 320 grit sandpaper after I do the first coat of clear coat, then I do the second coat of clear coat. And like I said, I do that for anything where you could actually see it. If you can't see it, I didn't really bother with it. So just did a quick dry fit with the plywood, then I'll lay down some glue, or in this case, construction adhesive, and then I'll set the top of the bench seat onto the boards. And then obviously I've screwed in the front piece there. I am using a brad nailer, so the sm pretty much the smallest air nailer possible to just sort of fix the bench seat down to the solid maple supports. And then for the, the board covering the frontage, obviously I did use construction adhesive again, and then I used some brad nails from the back, and I also used a few screws from the back, so just little one inch screws that would uh, not penetrate all the way through. And once again, more construction adhesive. And I don't use any brad nails for this sort of bench divider piece here. I just use the construction adhesive and then I use some angle brackets, but I'll show that in a second. And then again, just to cover the plywood edge, I'm using that one inch board. So construction adhesive, put the board in, and then I'm using, once again, just brad nails, really tiny nails, you could hardly see them once they're uh, once they're in place so that's the bench pretty much done and like i said how i secured the bench to the back so it wouldn't be floppy is just used angle brackets so just bought a bunch of those from home depot and screwed them into the bottom the tops in the end i use about uh, six of them to secure the uh, the divider there to the the bench seat so after that, I'm going to do the shiplap. So really everything's about that 36 inch mark, give or take a little bit. And I use tape on the shiplap board so that they don't uh, get chipped because they're pre-painted just to uh, speed up the process here. I do have some, some sealing flat paint that I used sort of to touch them up a little bit where they did get split. But uh, any touch up was very minor, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Once again, using construction adhesive, and I do shoot nails through the, the top of the boards only. Uh, you could, I guess, shoot them through the bottom as well, but then you'd see them. So it's almost like a tongue and groove system. Just going through the top, I guess, tongue, you don't really see the nails. In fact, you don't see the nails at all. And one, once again, that back corner is a little bit dipped back, just right there, so I do just use some the construction adhesive so when it dries it'll obviously be solid there really the the shiplap everything just sort of goes together now so just keep cutting the pieces the same width i do find that it sort of gets a little bit wider at the top adds about a quarter inch as it goes up so that kind of screwed me over for one piece but that's okay and then again obviously just using the the nail gun to shoot nails through the shiplap on the the tongue edge only and I think you get the idea now, but there's one more piece of shiplap going in. Pretty simple, glue it, nail it, make sure that it's well secured, and then move on to the next piece. Very simple. So there's all the shiplap that I'm going to do, like I said, because obviously I'm going to put that shelf in up top. Before I do the top shelf, I'm going to put the hanger hooks in there. And I've already stained up this one board, and I've sort of put the location of where I want the hangers to go. So I'm going to shoot the nails 
directly behind where the the coat hangers are going to go so once i put the coat hangers in it'll actually hide the nail holes that are in this this piece of maple here so in addition to just the glue there's going to be eight nails that are going to hold that to the shiplap behind it and then i'll put the the hooks in and like i said those hooks cover the nail holes and for these hooks we just ordered them off amazon i think they came in like a ridiculous 10 pack or something so I got a whole bunch of hooks kicking around the house. I'll figure out what I can do with those in the future. But definitely they were pretty cheap and they're good. They seem to be reasonably sturdy hooks. And then really the last thing I'm doing here is the top shelf. All the boards are done in the exact same way with the pre-treatment, the stain, and then the clear coat. For everything up top, I do two coats of the clear coat because obviously you're going to see everything. And I made the, uh, the top shelf the exact same dimensions as the bench on the bottom. I do it a little bit differently. I'm going to use the shiplap to hold up the shelf on the back so there's no board on the back. So I guess that is one difference between the, the seat and the shelf. But other than that, they're, they're virtually the, the same process for putting everything together. And I do use, once again, just the, the, the smallest nails I got that'll uh, shoot through the plywood and into the supports for the top shelf. And I do the front support a little bit differently, I guess. I didn't really realize it because this took me so long to put together, about a month in the process. So I do this, this one goes uh, between the two side supports as, as opposed to the other one I put on, which went across the, the frontage. So little bit of a nuance difference but you can't tell that they're done differently anyway so it's not that big of a deal i don't know which one i prefer i think they they both turned out to be about the same i did run out of construction adhesive so i switched to no nails glue because that was what i had available in my basement so you can see the difference between uh, how i did this one how i did the other one for the seat it went across the two front boards and i screwed this board into the the boards on the front and then for this one obviously I put it between the two side support boards so slight modification I didn't even uh, think about it while I was doing it and then once again I am using these angle brackets on uh, on the frontage so you can see I dropped one angle bracket on each of the sides and then I put two in between that front support board and the plywood and that's what it would look like with the plywood edge for a, a stained up version of it. If you don't mind that, then you wouldn't really need this front board. But I think the front board makes it look better. And the, the board on the front will actually give it a lot more support. So you won't have a, a shelf that flexes down, particularly if you had a wider shelf. So it gives you a, a double board up front. Once again, I use some glue, put that down, and then I shoot some brad nails from the back forward and... Again, you can't really see them on the back anyway, and they're not long enough to go all the way through the front. So that's that. Then the other thing I do is I take eight screws, and I put eight screws from the back to the front, uh, pre-drill them, and then countersink them. And that's pretty much it. So overall, this took a really long time because of all the staining I had to do and clear coating. Just the assembly is actually not that hard or not that time consuming. It's just when you want to stain it and clear coat and all that stuff. Anyway, I'm happy with how it turned out. I've had to stand on the bench numerous times while I'm putting the shelf together. So it's obviously strong enough for, for the kids that are going to use it. And I think it looks good. It's functional. gives me a spot to put a couple of, uh, a couple of bins and stuff and hang coats. So I'm happy with it. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Sorry it was a little bit long. Don't forget to like and subscribe.